Okay. So uh, today we'll be discussing via this video lecture the third module or third uh, video with respect to cost volume profit analysis. So in the first two videos, we did discuss uh, cost behavior. That's number one. Number two, basic concepts in cost volume profit analysis. And in this third video, we'll extend further the cost volume profit analysis uh, concept you know, to tackle uh, and relate it more to business decision making. And at the same time, look at risks with respect to businesses. And third is to consider multi-product companies. No. So as mentioned, uh, we will be dealing with more advanced topics of cost volume profit analysis in this video. What are our learning outcomes? Our first learning outcome is for you to be able to use the CVP framework to analyze business decisions. At the end of the day, the CVP analysis is a framework to look at business decisions or business strategies and to be able to determine whether they have any profit impact. It also gives you a, an organized way to look at strategies and to know your priorities. And at the end of the day, uh, the, the, the objective of the firm is to maximize firm value maximize profits no? and so therefore all strategies of the firm must be aligned with that no? in mind and the CVP analysis is an organized way to think about whether that that objective of maximizing profit is uh, attained or achieved second we want to compute and interpret the mar margin of safety and degree of operating leverage uh, these are two concepts that are uh, uh, related to the risk of a certain business and we'll discuss more of it later. Third, we want to determine the break-even point for a multi-product company. Uh, just noting the fact that in our previous two lectures, we are just looking into the break-even point of a single product company. So now we try to extend it to multi-product companies. Are there additional assumptions that we need to own? To undertake or to, to assume and if yes uh, how will we deal with that uh, assumption moving forward okay recall we, we, we recall the, the basic break-even point okay so recall that in computing for the break-even point what we do is to uh, divide the fixed cost by the contribution margin per unit uh, by doing so, we will determine how much units okay, of sales do we need to, to, to target or to, to sell ultimately so that the contribution margin is equal to fixed costs. And in so doing, we are able to recover all the costs of the company and therefore we have a, uh, a company with operating income of zero. Okay, and that's the concept of the break-even point. So at the end of the day, we are trying to relate several variables on this break-even point, right? What are those variables? We want to know the contribution margin, which is a function of selling price and variable cost, right? We want to know the fixed cost, which are which can be discretionary or not. And the intermingling of these three factors affect the ultimate amount of break-even point which you are required to sell so that you can break even and to have zero operating income. So at the end of the day, the CVP analysis describes the relationship between cost, volume, you know, and the contribution margin of the company. You know. Cost, volume, and profit, the relationship between the three. Actually, there's one item that's not being mentioned there, and it's the, the, the role of the contribution margin in this whole analysis, which we will delve more in this lecture. Now, the same framework of CVP analysis or break-even point analysis can be used to determine the amount of sales required to target a certain profit level that the company may want to uh, 
undertake or to want to implement. So a variation of the break-even point calculation is the target profit calculation. So aside from just targeting zero profit, why don't we target a certain amount of profit? No, because the break-even point assumes that there's zero net income, right? Break-even nay. Pero what if we need to target a profit level? Can we use the same analysis? No. The answer is yes. No. Let's go to the next line. Let's look at this sample calculation. So this company has a selling price, is selling tablets. Selling price is $500. Variable cost is $275. And fixed cost is $13,500. Okay. So previously, we were asked to compute for its break-even point, And the break-even point is 60 units. Okay. But now, this company wants to target an operating income of $4,500. The question is, how much? should they sell so that they can achieve the target operating income okay so recall if you look at that uh, equation below recall that it actually came from the break-even point calculations actually came from this basic uh, equation of determining operating income right selling price times quantity sold minus variable cost times quantity sold minus fixed cost equals operating income in the break-even point analysis, we assume that operating income is zero and we solve for Q, which is the quantity we need. No. This time, we're not assuming operating income as zero and we can solve for Q regardless. No. So if we solve for Q regardless, operating income plus fixed cost divided by selling price minus variable cost is the amount or the quantity required so that you can reach the target operating income. No. So, sa halip na zero yung OI, makakaroon ng number. In this case, 4,500. So, how do you interpret this in business terms? One way to interpret this is, hindi na lang fixed cost yung gusto kong i-recover using contribution margin. What I want to recover is fixed cost plus a certain level of targeted income. Right? Now, with that additional income that I want to recover, how much additional should I sell? No, and therefore, it factors in, in the whole equation. So in this case, operating income target is 4.5 plus fixed cost of 13,500 divided by the contribution margin, which is, which is 225 per unit. Then the result is that the break-even point is now 80 units or the target sales will now be 80 units versus the break-even point of 60 units. Okay, so um, th this gives you a framework also on profit planning, you know, and how to target, you know, how much sales, what will be the sales target to achieve a certain profit level. So therefore, in this, um, using that introductory example, you know, we are we are now introducing the concept that CVP analysis can be used to analyze the impact of changes in cost, changes in selling price, changes in uh, fixed cost to the overall profitability of the firm. And we can do that by conducting a sensitivity analysis. Okay. So a sensitivity analysis is a what-if technique that estimates profit or loss if sales price, cost, volume, or other underlying assumptions change. Let's look at an example. So here, let's situate an example or describe a situation wherein a company needs to change its sales price. So we are in a pandemic right now. So the demand for touch, touch screen tablet is very high, right? The market is very competitive because of that. And therefore, the company believes that it must be able to match its competitors with respect to pricing so they are saying that they must cut the price from 500 to 475 per tablet okay the question is how will this impact the break-even point no the question so originally the original break-even point is 60 units no at 500 dollar share price uh, right now 
uh, what's our expectation with respect to the break-even point since the proposal is to reduce selling price from 500 to 475 okay the idea is that what's the impact of the reduction the impact of the reduction is to reduce the contribution margin and by reducing the contribution margin what happens to the required sales in units or the break-even point you'll have to sell more to recover the same amount of fixed cost and therefore we see in this example you know, that the number of units required is now 68 units or 67.5 but there are no partial tablets so we round up you no know, you need 68 units to break even okay so we see that the impact of reducing the contribution margin you no know, is to increase the break even point why is that the case because you need to sell more units now because your contribution margin is less okay so marketing side you want to compete in terms of pricing so lowering the pricing has this impact on the break even point now what is the next question that you have to ask your marketing director the next question you have to ask is okay the break even point must increase by eight units are you expected to have increases in sales more than eight units no because we lost something here no, so you need to ask your marketing director how much is the incremental volume that we will receive because of this uh, competitive pricing okay so that's a question that a finance person should ask the marketing director okay so this gives you a framework on how to analyze that specific uh, tactical plan next is in terms of changes in variable cost now, because of the pandemic of course there could be issues in terms of, of supply chain okay since there are issues with respect to supply chain costs could be a little bit more expensive right so in this case it was uh, suggested that uh, the production team is saying that there might be increases in variable cost to 285 from the original cost of 275 so that's a little bit uh, that's a $10 increase in variable cost. So assuming the same level of sales of 500 is used, what's now the new break even point? So what happens? An increase in variable cost decreases the contribution margin. And with that, what happens? With decreased contribution margin, what happens is that uh, you have to sell more to recover the same amount of fixed cost. And so in this case, the break-even point increased to 63 units right so what's the issue there the issue is we have to stick with our current suppliers and they are charging us higher costs you know, because of logistics issues due to the pan pandemic that's the tactical issue and so you as the finance person here in this case will now say that okay but you have to sell more because of, we have to sell more because of this third increases in fixed cost or changes in fixed cost now because of the fierce competitive market smart touch learning is saying that no oh, we need to advertise more no because online is the way to go so therefore um, advertising online spending an additional three thousand dollars on website banner ads would be important to the sustainability of our business so with that what do you do you recompute the break-even point from 13.5 plus 3,000 16,500 no and since you know that the fixed cost will increase you know that the you know you need to sell more so to recover that increased cost no and here we see that the new break-even point is now 74 units so you ask now the marketing director again we're spending 3,000 what's the incremental profit incremental volume impact of this increase hindi pwede namang papayag ka lang gumastos right an investment of 3,000 must have a return to us so dapat mabawi yun so that's what we need to ask the marketing director in this case okay Now, in summary, or in as a, as a summary, 
the, the every decision of the firm no, will either affect its sales price, its variable cost, or its, fi or its fixed cost. No? For example, more training. More training means increase in fixed cost, right? So that's an HR issue. Um, for example, going going pay Maya instead of cash collections. Okay, if you collect via pay Maya, they will charge a transaction fee. That transaction fee is a variable cost, so it will increase variable cost. No. Uh, so I guess the point is, at the end of the day, all business decisions affect costs, and therefore, the CVP analysis gives you a framework no, to determine what is the impact to break even point of these business decisions. Okay, so <clears throat> if you look at this table, a sales price increase or a variable cost decrease. No will increase the contribution margin, right? And therefore, increasing contribution margin will reduce the break-even point. On the other hand, reducing sales price you know, and increasing variable cost will decrease the contribution margin, right? And because of that, the break-even point will have to increase because you have to sell more to recover the same amount of fixed cost. And if you look at fixed cost, it's quite the impact is quite obvious. An increase in fixed cost means you have more costs to recover and therefore the break-even point increases. The same is true with uh, total fixed cost. When it decreases, you have to recover less costs. So therefore, the break-even point will decrease. Okay. So, it na it's now neatly tucked into this um, this framework no, on how to determine the profit impact. No, you just think in terms of contribution margin no? or think in terms of the break-even point. And it will give you a directional analysis on what's the impact to break-even point and to profitability. Now, what are some other ways that the CVP analysis can be used? And we, are, we will talk about three things, the margin of safety and operating leverage and the sales mix. Let's start with margin of safety. So margin of safety is a measure of risk. So the margin of safety is the excess of expected sales over break-even sales. So if your expected sales is 100, but your break-even point is 40, it means that you have a buffer of 60, right? 60 is the margin of safety, okay? Uh, and that amount, so that's an example. So let's look at this specific example for the tablet company. Their expected sales is 100 and their break-even sales is 60. So the 40 is their 40 tablets is their margin of safety. It's called safety because it's how far away from you from your break-even point. The farther you are, the more safe your operations are, right? It can also be expressed as a margin of safety in dollars. So just, just multiply 40 tablets by the sales amount per unit, which is $500 in this case, so equals $20,000 can also be expressed as a ratio. So you take the margin of safety is 40 tablets divided by the expected units of 100. So the margin of safety ratio is 40%. Okay. Again, it is used to evaluate risk. The farther you are from the break-even point, the less risky your operations are. Because if you're so close already to your break-even point, it means that counting kibot, lugi ka na. No, so you need to watch your operations more closely. The second concept is the operating leverage concept. Okay, I think the f before we discuss operating leverage, we need to further define the cost structure of a company. When we talk about cost structure of a company, we're lo looking at the proportion of fixed costs to variable costs of a company. Okay. The cost structure of a company can be heavily fixed or heavily variable. Okay, what are examples of uh, companies wherein their cost structure is skewed towards fixed costs? An example of that would be airlines. You know, they have uh, fixed rentals uh, and all, or utilities with high capital expenditures. So those are more. Uh, 
are companies whose cost structure are more fixed than variable. There are some companies wherein their operations is more skewed towards variable cost. Example is services. So, uh, that's one example, services. Because they have very little fixed cost. For example, you're an advertising company. Fixed cost mo lang, computer, equipment. You know, we don't really have very huge fixed costs. So more likely, most of your costs are variable. Okay. So those are some examples. So when we talk about cost structure, we're talking about whether the company's costs are primarily fixed or variable. Okay. And the operating leverage sort of measures it. So, what is the operating leverage? The operating leverage predicts the effects that fixed cost will have on changes in operating income when sales volume changes. Okay. Later, we'll have an example. And how do you compute the degree of operating leverage? It can be measured by dividing the contribution margin by the operating income. So, CM, contribution margin, divided by operating income. So, it shows you how sensitive your operating income is to changes in contribution margin. May multiplier effect ba? Meaning, kailangan mo ba ng 2.5 times sales for every peso of operating income? No? Or 1 is to 1 ba yan? For every peso na idagdag mo sa operating income as sa contribution margin, ang impact sa operating income, peso rin. Okay? So, that's what we will explore. If you look at two companies, company A and B, company A has a contribution margin of 10,000 and an operating income of 4,000. Okay. Company B has an operation uh, contribution margin of 5,000 and an operating income of 4,000. So they have the same operating income, but they don't have the same contribution margin. Okay, what does that mean? No. It means the only, kasi para kang makarating sa operating income, the difference between contribution margin operating income, yung nasa gitna nila, is fixed cost. It means magkaiba sila ng fixed cost, right? Company A has a fixed cost of 6,000. Company B's fixed cost is 1,000. Therefore, company A is more fixed cost heavy in terms of the cost structure. Company B naman has more variable cost rather than fixed cost mababa ang kanyang fixed cost. So, ang cost structure niya heavily skewed towards variable cost. And the degree of operating leverage sort of captures that. So, the higher the degree of operating leverage, it means the cost structure is more fixed. The lower it is, the cost structure is more variable. Okay. What is the uh, uh, meaning behind 2.5 and 1.25? Okay. So for company A, the change in operating income will be 2.5 times the percentage change in sales. Okay. So if percentage change in sales is 1%, the percentage change in operating income will be 2.5. Okay. On the other hand, for company B, percentage change in operating income will be 125 times the percentage change in sales. So a 1% change in operating uh, in sales will result in 1.25 times percent or 1.25 percent change in operating income. What does that tell you? It tells you na mas malit yung multiplier for company B. Okay. For company A, the multiplier is 2.5. It's higher. Mas malaki yung impact to bottom line when you increase sales by 1%. No? I, I think this also fundamentally um, describes the risk-return concepts in finance. High, high fixed-cost companies are riskier. Right? Why, why is it riskier? High, leverage, high, high fixed-cost companies are riskier because you have to recover more cost for you to take a profit. Right? As simple as that. Okay? Uh, but, okay, these companies with higher fixed cost, in this case, gives you a little bit more return, right? High cost, high return, or high risk, high return. 
Okay, why? Because a 1% percent 1% increase in sales, the bottom line impact is 2.5 times. 2.5%. No, so kumbaga may reward. No, the problem is before you go to the profit zone of the CVP graph, you have to hurdle a lot of fixed costs. That's why the operations is a little bit more risky. Okay. On the other hand, company B is more variable costs. So therefore, konti lang kailangan niyang i-hurdle para kumita siya. The drawback is mas maliit din yung kanyang multiplier. It's only 1.25 times. Okay. So, that's one application of the contribution margin analysis. No? We're able to describe whether a company is more has more fixed cost in its uh, cost structure or more variable cost. Three, a third um, concept that we will explore is the sales mix. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are we we up to this point we've been considering companies with only one product. What happens when there are multi-product companies? Um, and sales price and the variable cost differ for each product. Okay. The first step is to assume a certain ratio okay, between the two companies, two products of the company. So we have we need to calculate the weighted average contribution margin per unit. Okay. How do you do that? We can look at it this way. Okay, for example, you have two um products here beds and posts the sales price for beds is 44 for posts 100 and the variable cost is 24 and 30. they have different contribution margins per unit 20 and 70. okay a critical assumption in this analysis is the sales mix in units no? what is the ratio of beds to posts that we are going to compute for okay in this case the ratio is 3 is to 2 but what is the meaning of 3 is to 2? How do you determine it? Probably it's based on experience. Now based on past data, the usual ratio of sales between beds and posts is 3 is to 2. Okay? And with that, you're able to compute a weighted average contribution margin per unit of a composite unit. Okay? And that composite unit's contribution margin is, on the average, $40. Okay? So what you will do is you will use $40 here as the way as the usual contribution margin when you calculate the break even point. So you compute as usual. No? So calculate the break even point in units for the package of products. So in this case the fixed cost is 40,000 divided by the weighted average contribution margin per unit which is $40 per unit. So you need to sell 1000 units. Okay. But remember, units here refers to one package. Okay, So one unit is equal to uh, three-fifths of uh, beds and two-fifths of posts. right? So therefore, you have to break up the 1,000 units to its components. So how do you do it? So if the total break-even sales is 1,000 times three-fifths, which is the uh, which is the ratio for beds, you will now determine that you need 600 cat beds and 400 scratching posts to reach break-even. Okay. Here we just show that uh, we are at the break-even point. No. So 600 times $44 and 400 times $100. So those are the selling prices. Multiply it by the variable cost and deduct fixed cost. We arrive at zero operating income. Now suppose the company would like to earn operating income of $20,000 $20, as we have previously discussed. So we just add $20,000 to $40,000 which is the fixed cost. So if you want to earn additional $20,000 of target profit, you now have to increase the composite uh, sales to 1,500 units and the combination of 900 cut bids and 600 scratching posts will do the trick for you. 
uh, this last slide shows the uh, that we have attained the 20,000 operating income. So there, so this is the last um, video in the cost volume profit analysis series. So I hope that you've learned these aspects. And of course, this lecture supplements the text that you will read. You know, so uh, hoping that this lecture was uh, helpful to you. Thank you, and it's the end of the presentation.